Hello everyone. Today is Friday, August the 27th, 2021. Uh, once again, this is take three. Um, for some reason, my devices will not obey the do not disturb button. So anyway, um, this is my channel, Proverbs 3122, if you're new here. My name is Shelly, and um, this is a channel about uh, cross-stitch and quilting. Mostly cross-stitch, but a little bit more quilting lately. Um, quilting was really, well, let me backtrack. My very first love was cross-stitch. Um, my very first cross-stitch project, or the very first quilt I made, was a cross-stitch quilt. Um, I didn't know anything about quilting back then. And um, actually, I'll insert a picture of that quilt here. And so that young man was the son of some of our good friends in Louisiana. And I made that quilt um, for his birth. And um, like I said, I didn't know anything about quilting. Um, I tied it. I didn't, you know do any other quilting other than tying it. They didn't use it, they just hung it on his wall when he was a baby. And so, um, you know, cross-stitch was sort of my first love as far as crafting goes. And then um, it kind of, I felt like my eyesight got a lot worse. And so, I mean, I was a lot younger then, so I didn't use magnification or anything like that. But um, I kind of, branched over and started quilting instead and quilted from, let's see, right before we moved to Alabama in 2003 until, uh, you know, that was my main crafting endeavor. Some tatting on the side, some crochet, some knitting, uh, but it was mostly quilting from, you know, just before 2003 all the way to the middle of 2019. Um, in my quilting, I followed Fat Quarter Shop, and if you follow them, you know in, in the last couple of years that um, the owner there, Kimberly, has come back to Cross Stitch again, and so she started sharing more and more and showing all the beautiful finishes and unique finishes, and so uh, I dove right back into Cross Stitch um, and, you know, branched out into new um, threads, new fabrics, uh, new finishing techniques, and uh, I haven't looked back, really. Um, for a long time, it did really take, you know, the front seat over quilting. Now there's sort of, it's still a little bit more toward cross-stitch, but it's, you know, I'm getting more quilting in. So I don't know why I had to say all that, but anyway, if you're new here, now you know a little bit more about me. So, um, excuse the hair today, right as I was getting dressed after a shower, uh, I had a phone call from my younger brother, and so we talked for a bit, and my hair was up in a towel, and so it partially dried in the towel, and so I just finished blow drying it, you know, brushed it out, and then that's just it. It's just wild today. This, I don't know if you can see it when it's against the dark background, but this is basically what my hair does if left to its own devices, and I can't stand it. It's like the back is just, like the front is just like straight, and then the back is like all body and colics and, <sighs> so anyway, um, I'm real late today doing this, real late getting started. I had a horrible night's sleep last night. Um, I always read before I go to sleep at night. So I read last night. Um, read until, you know, I was like not able to hold my eyes open anymore. Um, put the tablet away, rolled over, and it was like my mind just like flipped a switch and it was off to the races. And, you know, it was just worrying about Worrying about all the health things I have going on, worrying about, um, you know, my family and friends in Louisiana who are, you know, preparing for um, the imminent arrival of Ida as a hurricane, um, you know, worrying about 
the fact that it's, you know, predicted to make a direct uh, landfall hit on the area that I grew up in, um, the area where my, um, my dad, who passed away last August, is, um, his house is still there. It's unoccupied. It's uninsured. Um, and, you know, worrying about, you know, if it gets destroyed and we have to pay for the cleanup and just worrying about all the things. And so I didn't go to bed until probably 3.30 this morning. So I'm getting quite a late start. But um, anyway, I have um, a FFO quilting wise to show you. Um, I have um, the quilts on the wall behind me I'm going to talk about. I have one little quilting plan I'm going to talk about. I have some um, some news from the cross-stitch community to talk about. Um, I have some three whips that I worked on, and I'll talk about my upcoming plans, um, which may um, shock all of you who are uh, regulars to my channel. First of all, let me do a short little uh, book review on the book that I stayed up reading last night. So it, the name of the book was um, The Unlikely Chaperone. The author is Dorothy Mack. I don't know anything about Dorothy Mack. I don't know if she's, um, I think the copyright on the book was 1991. Um, had it not been for my um, desire to know what happened with the characters, I probably would have stopped reading the book after two chapters. Um, I don't have anything against a varied vocabulary in the books that I read, but when it seems to be just sort of um, like every sentence on every page pretty much has, you know, big old words in them that, you know, some of them I know the meaning, some of them I have to go look up. It just seems a little tedious to me and like, you know, a lot of eye rolling. It's the same thing as when I read something and there's all kind of grammatical errors in it. It drives me crazy. Same thing with that. It was like, just stop showing off your vocabulary and just tell the story. Um, but anyway, I mean, I did make it through the book and I did want to see what happened to the characters and that's why I made it through the book. Um, you know, if you don't mind the, you know, overuse of large words, then, you know, by all means, read it if you like Regency romances. Um, it was a pretty good story. I liked most of the characters. Um, so it was, it was different than ones that I normally read. So a little different. So anyway, um, I did get a finish on the baby quilt that I have been quilting for my, um, my daughter's sister-in-law is expecting a baby, a baby girl. And I've been working on this. If you're, you're a retarder, you've seen this in the last couple of videos. Of course, I can't see what you just saw, so I hope you were able to see it all. This is the back. And I even have the label on it. Um, I do um, do my binding by machine. I used to do it by hand, and I stopped doing that a couple of years ago when I needed something done really quickly um, and discovered that, you know, the machine was a lot faster. <laughs> Big surprise, right? But anyway, in order to give it a little bit more than just, you know, straight stitching on it, I do, um, I attach it to the back side of the quilt first. Then I wrap it around to the front and I stitch it down with a machine blanket stitch. It just gives it a little bit more, you know, a little bit more interest. And it kind of, it's a little bit better at maybe hiding the flaws in it. So anyway, that one's done and I'm ready to um, get that on Sunday. I did, um, one of the reasons why I had to stop um, filming again <laughs> was because my daughter was texting me. My grandson, Nathan, um, has been feeling bad the last couple of days, and so we might not even go to this baby shower this weekend. Um, I don't really think I would go if my daughter and her, you know, her family weren't gone. Um, but she did let us know that, um, so 
he's been having um, a really sore throat for the last um, few days, I guess. Um, so they thought maybe he had strep. The strep te test was negative, and so they did test him for COVID. Um, it'll be three to five days before they find out. He doesn't have any, um, no fever, but sore throat, runny nose, and body aches. So the nurse did say that several people with similar symptoms, including no fever, have been testing positive for COVID. So, um, Okay, so I'm just catching up on that. So anyway, pray for Nathan. So, and of course, you know, prayers for, you know, all the people in Louisiana who are preparing and watching this storm approach. Um, you know, even though we have, um, even though we have, uh, tornadoes here in North Alabama, Northwest Alabama, which, you know, or nerve wracking. Um, at least it's not, I don't miss sitting in front of the TV for weeks, watching storms, you know, slowly approaching and not knowing where they're going to go and do we need to leave? And, you know, if you wait too long, then you can't get out and all that kind of stuff. So I don't miss that at all. But, you know, my family or, you know, a large number of my family are still down there and my husband's family. Um, so, you know, and my sister-in-law um, and brother-in-law who live in the Lafayette area, they have flooded like three times in their home. So, um, yeah. And then they also have to, you know, worry about my mother-in-law's home in Patterson. Um, at least it is insured. So um, we should be um, good there. I'm going to pause for a minute, and I will be back in just one second. Okay, I'm back. All right, so picking up with the quilting, um, the quilt on the wall behind me, that is um, Corey Yoder's A Very Coriander Christmas Blocks. Um, they're not laid out in any way, shape, or form how it's going to be the final layout. It has sashing in the middle of it. Um, I have two, I think I have two blocks left to complete. And so I'm planning to um, piece those blocks before I work on any other piece in any other um, quilts. Um, I did decide, though, to um, make a change with the other baby quilt, my daughter's other um, sister and brother-in-law. They're having a baby as well. Um, they weren't going to find out the sex of the baby, so I was doing a red and cream quilt that had a lot of florals in it, um, but then they accidentally found out that it was a boy on an ultrasound, and so I did change my plan for that quilt. Um, I'm going to do this quilt instead. This is um, one from So Sampler Box back in October of 2018, and... Um, it comes with the template needed to make the, um, to turn the two and a half inch strips into the blocks. And so it comes with the two and a half inch strips. And this is a petite modern backgrounds, more paper jelly roll. So I thought it looked, um, you know, more masculine, more monochromatic. Um, I will have to do, um, We'll have to probably buy material for borders. I probably have what I need to do backing and binding, but the borders, I will have to get something for those. Um, and let's see. Well, it says right there. So it's 35 and a half square. Um, I think that's about what the Mai Tai one is. So I don't know if I'll worry about maybe doing the borders a little bit bigger to make it a little bit bigger. But anyway, that's my new plan for that quilt. But I won't start piecing that until I'm done with the blocks for the Christmas quilt. Okay, so let's see. Okay, let me show you next what I've been stitching on cross-stitch-wise. 
So I have been stitching on my daily focus piece, Elizabeth Weston from Hands Across the Sea, samplers. I'm using the called for DMC flosses. And it lives in this project bag that I made a while back. And I did get a page finish. So I'm finished with page number five, I believe is what I'm on. And so I've gotten to this point right here on it. So I worked the page five was, you know, the edge of these over one letters and then these motifs right here. And so I got done with that before the end of the month. And then this is it. And um, so far what I have done. It's just beautiful, and I, I just really can't even fathom having a piece this this large and framed and up on my wall in a few years. So that's stitched on a 36 count uh, linen. That's Stra um, Strawberry Lane. Devin over on Etsy had hand dyed for me specifically for that project. So I stitched on that, and then I also stitched on the EMABC sale which uh, features Erica Michael's sampler book, which is a free pattern over at, <laughs> over at Rainbow Gallery. And so we're working currently um, on letter D, which is for Dandelion and Diamond Ray Stitch. So um, the pattern called for only one color of green. So I chose um, two instead, one for the border, one for the, um, the leaves of the dandelion the stalk. stalk. Um, I think I'm probably going to choose a third green for the grass, which is the diamond ray stitch. Um, so I think, I think I've decided I'm going to do that. I'll have to see what I have in my stash, but I'm leaning towards doing that. So all I have to do left on the border is to um, do the, the two corners at the bottom. And then I need to put one stitch in the middle of this one because I did put a stitch over here. I kind of thought that I wouldn't put that single stitch of a different color. And then I decided to do it. And now I'm kind of regretting that I did. But anyway, I don't like just doing one stitch if I can avoid it. And then I just have to fill in the letters right here and that will be done. So this is a 28 count even weave Monaco that I hand dyed um, for this project. Oh, and I also have to do um, the running stitch around the edge of it. And then that project lives in this bag, which came in uh, this April's Sew Sampler box. I don't subscribe to Sew Sampler box anymore, but I did sign up just for one month for their anniversary. Like April is the birthday month of Sew Sampler, and it's usually a pretty good box. So I wanted that that one this April. So when I went to uh, get my oil change um, earlier this week, on Tuesday before we did our my husband's birthday celebration, I did bring my little travel piece, one of my travel pieces to stitch on. This is American Spirit from Fat Quarter Shop Stitch Quarterly. And these come with um, the bag, with a needle, with the fabric, with the threads, and usually a little um, notion. And so I really like these bags. I don't get them anymore because, you know, I don't have a job. So um, but this is all the stuff that came in this one. So if you've, you know, if you've ever thought about it or never heard of it, I would definitely check it out. I know they have some open spots. At least they did last time. Um, she mentioned it on this past week's floss tube. So um, this is a 25 count vintage country mocha Lugana. And I'm stitching with two strands of that call for DMC over two threads. And I've gotten the stripes completely done. And so now I will probably come up here and do the white stitches so that I can then take it to travel places and fill in the blue. And then I'll have the bottom to do. Uh, there is a mistake up here on the top one, but I'm not frogging it. I'm leaving it. 
also. So those are the three <clears throat> the free cross stitch whips that I worked on. So even though I've um, really reduced my stitching um, quantity of whips slightly just because of um, just because of stress related stuff like I felt like I just like with all the health things I have going on and all of that I just felt like I needed to scale back and in doing that I've kind of decided to um, scale back a little bit more so um, <clears throat> I, a couple of days ago, I took out my calendar and made um, plans for actually through part of next year. And so um, this is September. So just to give you an example, if you're new here, um, this is what my stitching rotation have, has looked like in the past. So I'd work on a lot of li a lot of whips um, every day and make just a little bit of progress on them. A um, little bit of progress on them instead of making big chunks of progress. So I've decided that at least for the foreseeable future, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch um, most days one piece of stitching every day. Now on Mondays for the rest of this year, I do have my shabby advent calendar pieces that I need to do. And I don't want to fall behind on the EMABC style. So, um, you know, those days I will have two projects. But the rest of the days I have just one project per day. So I usually stitch three hours a day, and so um, I should make some pretty good progress. So what I'm planning to do is sort of do a uh, rotation. And as I went along with this, um, I kind of tweaked it a little bit more as I went through the months making my plans. Um, and so by the time I got to, let's see how far I went. I went all the way through um, through August, um, not quite as much detail, but I just sort of um, started writing over here to the side, um, you know, like Elizabeth Weston, I'm going to stitch on her five days every month, four or five days, and hopefully that will get me a page finish. Um, and then there's the, the um, Blackbird Design sale the first weekend of every month, and so that's three days for that. And so um, I want to do the, um, the seasonal ABCs that I think is by Little House Needleworks. I want to do those this year, so I'm going to spend three days on those each month. You know, and three days at three hours a day, you know, should get me a finish on those. Now, if it doesn't, I can always tweak things and not work on other ones so many days. Um, let me go back to where it has a little bit more um, detail on. Okay, so like in um, February. So this is February. And so I've written down that I want to work on my Jesse Watson autism sale for two days. And that should get me a finish on um, each month's assignment. Working six hours, it should get it done. Five days on Elizabeth Weston. Three days on the ABCs of spring. Um, I'm going to do a new month, new start. And start the Satsuma Street egg hunt. And I'll work on that for four days. And then I'm going to work on my uh, EMABC, six days total, three for each letter. And then, you know, I have three days where I'll stitch on uh, Blackbird Designs. And so those are the, like, must stitches. And then, so then I just went through the rest of it. And um, the days that were left over, I filled in that I was going to work on um, certain projects for two or three days. 
So it's not really monogamous because I'm not just stitching on one project till it's done, but it's definitely more monogamous than I have been since I came back to stitching. So, uh, you know, doing a rotation of uh, working on one whip for several days in a row and only working on that whip should get me a lot of progress on those whips and bring me to um, some FOs on a lot of them. Now, all that to say, I have a, a lot of whips. I have like 50 whips, so um, it's still a little bit overwhelming, you know, but at least I think that it's going to, you know, like I said, it's going to, it's going to bring me to getting more of them finished faster. Not faster, but in a shorter length of time because I'm not spreading it out among so many whips. I hope that makes sense. I know it does. Y'all are smart. Y'all can figure out what I'm talking about. I hope. <laughs> okay, so um, that's my plan going forward. Now, you know, let's say that my life gets... Um, not quite as stressful or if I decide I need to change, no problem. I only have one thing written on those calendar blocks. So if I decide I want to, um, you know, pick up more whips dur during each day, then all I have to do is add them to it, you know. It's not like I have to start over from scratch. I just have to add things to what I have there already. I have decided that for the time being, I'm going to let go of Magazine Monthly Challenge. Um, you know, and I don't know when I'll pick it back up, but I just, I need a break from it. So, um, that doesn't, not to say that I won't work on any of my previous magazine pieces, but I just need a break from doing the cross sticks and new starts and all that kind of stuff. So, that's all of my stitching and playing stuff. Um, I have a couple of uh, pieces of news and shout out. Um, Fat Quarter Shop is starting, uh, I think on the 7th of September. I could be wrong, but I think that's the day. They're starting a new um, stitch along. It's called All the Trimmings. It is a free pattern. Um, it is based on one of their quilts. And I don't know how long it's spread over. I'm sorry, I didn't look that up. But um, it's a Christmas piece. It's, they're doing it on 14-count chalkboard um, black Ada, which I have gobs of left from the Chalk Full series. Um, and I'm very tempted to, to join in with that, but I don't think I am. You know, it'll always be there if I want to go back and do it later. But for now, I don't think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do any new starts until I am doing one in November for my birthday. Um, and that will be, let's see, what did I decide on? I decided on the, um, Midsummer Garden, um, pattern that I just got the fabric and the flosses in from x Designs. So, um, also if you don't watch, um, Becca over at Sambry Stitches, uh, I highly recommend her. She's fantastic. I think we kind of started our channels about the same time, um, of course, she's had, you know, a meteoric rise, so um, fantastic for her. She's just great. But she also does a series of interviews with floss tubers, which are, are you know, very nice to watch, too, because you just learn about all these designers. But in her most, I don't know if it's her most recent one now, but the last few weeks, she's done one with... Um, Karen and Brennan over at um, Fox and Rabbit Designs, and it was fantastic. So um, I pulled it up, and it was like two hours. What on earth? But it was great. I mean, I put it, you know, on you know 1.25 speed, and you know, got through it a little bit faster. But I just loved hearing about all of their travels and you know, the, the challenges that they're facing in their business and, you know, the blessings of their business and all that kind of stuff. It was really good. So I definitely recommend that. Um, they also, um, Fox and Rabbit, they have a unicorn chart group over on Facebook. 
and I will try to find it. And I'm not a member of it. I don't really have any unicorn charts, but um, you know, if you have some that you're looking for that um, having a hard time finding them, you know, she said that it's been really successful so so far. I don't think it's been very long that they started that, and they're getting you know either loaned or um, gifted some of their unicorn charts people in the group are. So definitely check that out. Um, Teresa Kogut, I didn't realize that she had a freebie section on her website. I don't sign up for her newsletter or anything. I guess I really should on the designers that I like. I have a couple that I'm, you know, subscribed to, but I don't subscribe to her. But anyway, um, and I don't remember who mentioned it. But anyway, she does have a um, a new freebie on her site. And I'm trying to remember exactly what the pattern is. Unless that has birds on it. But anyway, go check that out. Definitely, you know, if you, you have a favorite designer, check their sites. Because a lot of them do have um, multiple freebies on their sites. So that's all the kind of new stuff. I did discover a new floss tuber. Her name is Crystal, and her channel is Stitching in the Green Mountains. She lives in Vermont, and um, I watched her first video, and I was, you know, hoping, fingers crossed, that she would share some pictures of, you know, the area that she lives in. She didn't on her first video, but on her second one she did. It's just gorgeous. I mean, you can just imagine, especially in the fall. Oh, gosh, I would love to visit that area. But anyway, she has a, um, she's only got two videos so far, so she's brand new. Won't take you long to catch up on her. Um, and she's got different projects, like, um, designers that I'd heard of, but not projects that I had seen before anywhere else. And so, um, and it sounds like maybe she's been stitching for a while, so, um, and she does spinning, she does knitting, and so um, she's worth a, a check out. Check her out, and you know, even if you don't, I don't know. I know there's a lot of floss tubers out there growing, you know, every day, I think. Um, and while you may not want to watch all of them on a regular basis, you know, go subscribe to their channels. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to it. Um, you do have to have a YouTube account, which is free. Um, you know, but if you're able to do that, definitely subscribe to our channels because um, we're just here to spread the love and the joy of stitching. And so um, as you move up in your subscriber numbers, you know, when you hit a thousand, it really opens up a lot of uh, perks to you and a lot of other things that you can do for the community. And so, you know, just consider doing that. I mean, I have a lot of a lot of channels that I'm subscribed to that, you know, I don't watch every single video they have. Some of them, I don't watch them for months and months and months. I have my favorites that I like to watch on a regular basis. And then the other ones I just sort of pick up here and there, you know, when I have spare time to do that. So, you know, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. And I know that each floss tuber that has a channel would definitely appreciate the love and the support of people subscribing to their channels. Um, so take that for what it's worth and, you know, give it some consideration. All right, so not a bad video, only 21 minutes, 22 minutes-ish. Um, I do need to go today and um, drop off applications. I had mentioned on my last video that the town hall here in Rogersville was hiring a part-time receptionist. So I picked up the application for that last week. And then my daughter sent me another post for um, the library here in Rogersville that's hiring a part-time library assistant. So I picked up that application, so I need to go drop those off today. Um, the library job is one that had come up before. I think it was a full-time position when it came up before. The pay was, the pay's low. Um, at that point in time, 
I couldn't do that pay cut. I couldn't, you know, drop down as much as uh, as it would have required me, even though it's only two minutes from my house. It just was a big enough cut that I couldn't do it. Um, we've, you know, since I've been unemployed and, you know, my dad passed away, we've gotten money from his estate and we've paid off a lot of debt. So I definitely could, you know, it would just be something to earn some extra money to sort of help out the household. I think my husband would be okay, you know, if I didn't go back to work, but our finances are not quite that great yet. Um, you know, and now I have all these tests going on and, you know, I have medical bills and things like that. So um, if I can find something part-time here in Rogersville, that would be really ideal. So I'm going to drop those off today. So if you don't, you know, mind sending some positive vibes and prayers my way, I appreciate it. Um, you know, whatever the Lord has for me, that's what I want. Um, even though, <laughs> even though sometimes it's like, really? Like my bags, you know, selling my bags. It's like, really? Why can't I sell my bags? You know, it's what I want to do. I want to make money selling stuff. Why can't I sell a single bag? I mean, I sell one to Angie. And, you know, I haven't sold another one since, you know, even though I listed, finally listed them on Instagram. So I've thought about just maybe um, dropping the price on them just so that, you know, my time and my materials are not a total loss. Um, I don't know. I'll see what, what happens, but anyway, I hope you all have a good weekend. Um, I'm a little disappointed about not being able to go to the baby shower because I'm not going to go without, and then, you know, I'm not going to go without my daughter and her family going, and I, they obviously won't be able to go. And then additionally, we were, um, we were around Nathan on Tuesday, so I don't know. I don't know if I should get out at all. I need to go drop off those those resume those resumes and applications, but maybe I can stick them in the mail. I don't know. Oh, I've got some things to go think about. Now I've got five more minutes on this video. So I will say goodbye to you all. I love you. I appreciate you so much for being here. Um, if you don't subscribe, please consider subscribing to me. Um, if you saw something that you like, hit the like, bu like button. And as always, your comments are welcome below. And I appreciate y'all. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.